I told you my dream came true 10 days later, would you believe me? If he were telling the truth, he wouldn't have told us. Unless of course he knew you wouldn't believe the truth, even if he told us. Hello world, the autistic Christian here. Do you ever have those moments when you're looking back at the recent events that unfolded in your life and then suddenly get hit with deja vu from a dream that you recently had as well? I hadn't seen my three kids in two years and last month I had to drive to Texas for a court hearing. It was a massive cause for stress and anxiety. Court was on December 18th and so I was planning on leaving early December 17th to try and see my kids. My family had moved since I left Texas and so I had no idea where my kids were. My wife lied and told me that they weren't even in Texas anymore. Needless to say, that had me spiral into another panic attack and I prayed that night for God to reveal where they were. And the next day, I had an address. I can't make this stuff up, but before I get too far off topic, let's get back to my dream. I wrote down my dream after waking up on December 7th and so I wrote this dream down, but before I read it, I want to tell you what happened next. On my way to Texas, I remember praying, Jesus, I just want to see my kids. Please, just let me see them. I rang the doorbell and it was my son, August. He asked me who it was and so I said, It's your dad, August. I've missed you so much. Can you please open the door? He opens the door and I immediately burst into tears. He swings the door open and I see Aiden and Abigail as well. Then our reunion quickly came to an end when my mother-in-law shooed them inside and closed the door on me. God gave me exactly what I asked for. I was literally just able to see them. I didn't even get a chance to embrace them or spend any time with them. I proceeded to try and communicate with my children and catch glances of them through the peephole. Both days that I went to go see them, my daughter Abigail told me to shut up. When she walked up to the door, I could see that she didn't really mean it. It was as if something else was influencing her to be this way, and so I wasn't hurt as much as I would have expected. But it was still devastating to hear my own child tell me to shut up, even though I've been guilty of so much worse. As I was reliving this moment, however, I suddenly remembered my dream, and also what the Holy Spirit revealed to me, and I almost forgot to share it. This dream was supposed to be a separate video, but perhaps God wanted it to simmer a little so I could put the whole picture together first. Enjoy. I had a dream. I was sitting in this very chair and in my room somehow my daughter and my wife were sitting with me. But as I was explaining, my wife and daughter kept cutting me off and I got so angry when my daughter told me to shut up that I raised my hand at my daughter, but just for show, not actually to hit her. But right then, my mother appears by the kitchen sink and she's yelling at me, criticizing me for raising my hands. And then I remember getting so angry and running over to my mother saying, This is wrong? This is wrong? Trying to discipline my daughter and getting angry when she interrupts me? I raise my hand to show her fear. You guys actually hit me in the head. And then I remember grabbing the knife in the washer and held it up and said, Don't you remember chasing us around the house with this? You're the reason I'm like this. And then I remembered waking up to yelling that in my waking moment. Then the Holy Spirit said to me, don't you see how funny it is how everyone can see me in them, but they can't see the devil in them the same way they see me? This is why Jesus made an example out of Peter several times throughout the Bible. Self-righteousness, pride, and the devices of men. This is what the dream is about. The devil is in all of us. And the devil wants to identify the devils in everyone else and point out the Jesus in themselves, including me. Judge not that you be not judged, for with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you see the speck in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that's in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when there is the log in your own eye? You hypocrite! First take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Do not give to dogs what is holy, and do not throw your pearls before pigs, lest they trample them underfoot and turn to attack you. Matthew 7, 1 through 6. In my dream, it was just the blame game, like Adam and Eve and the serpent, and I was wrong. I failed. I am the man. I am the father. I am the husband. I am a precious child of God, and it's okay to fail. It's okay to be the bad guy sometimes. It's okay to make mistakes, but if you never learn from them and don't let God mold you through the things He has to reveal to you, then it's not His fault you fail to see. God reveals Himself to me through His Word, dreams, and vision.
I don't know why God allows me to remember the dreams that I do, but I typically wake up every morning knowing I dreamt, but not having any recollection at all. But this dream actually played out 10 days later. My other dream played out the very same day. Now, I don't claim to be anything. I am no prophet. I'm no fortune teller. And no, I'm no better or worse than anyone else. But God is my judge, and there's one thing I know for sure. Jesus is God, and he is the only way. Nine parts true and one part false in a true or false statement is still false. Sure, you might think morality is subjective and then take that very same subjectivity and accuse God of being a moral thug with it. But morality is absolute and Jesus is the final judge. Jesus meets us where we are, but he never leaves us there. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest in your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Matthew 11, 28-30 If you still have breath in your lungs, it's not too late. Repent and cast your burdens to Jesus, because he's more than enough. Thanks for watching The Autistic Christian Out. If he were telling the truth, he wouldn't have told us. Unless, of course, he knew you wouldn't believe the truth, even if he told us.